Hi everyone! I'm going to show you how to use paint today. Um, so this is the Microsoft painting program that's in your computer already. Um, first I'm going to show you how to find it if you don't already know. Um, down here at the bottom in this white search bar, I'm going to type in paint. Um, two options come up. You've got Paint 3D and Just Paint. Um, Paint 3D is kind of the updated version. It has more features, um, so I would recommend using Paint 3D. Um, so here I am in Paint 3D. Now when it opens up, I'm going to be in uh, Brushes. Whoops. Hey. Whoops. New project, here we go. Um, so when you first open it up, it's going to be in brushes. You've got these options over here, which are your different brush tools. Um, marker is the first one it's going to be in. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty basic, solid kind of rounded line. Um, it's fairly smooth. You can, um, you can adjust the thickness. All right. Um, if you don't like something you did, you click the undo up here and start fresh. So something I forgot while doing this, um, this is a touchscreen computer. And I believe that most, if not all of you have touchscreen computers. Um, so you can get much smoother lines if instead of using the trackpad or a mouse, uh, you use your finger to draw directly on the computer. <clears throat> It, so I can use my thicknesses. Um, another option here is opacity. So opacity is kind of hiding a little bit. You have to scroll down and opacity is very cool. Um, so opacity makes your marker slightly see-through and you can, you know, you can change how see-through, make it very light or almost almost solid. Um, and then below that we've got your colors. Um, so here you have a color palette of pre-selected colors that you can choose from. If you don't like any of those, if you want to choose your own color, which I highly recommend, um, you click on this bigger one, all right, the long rectangle. This bring, brings up your color selection menu. Um, so you've got a full spectrum down here that you can select from the color family you want, and then within that you can move around to get a pastel or a really dark one. You can have bright colors, muted colors, so all sorts of colors within this selector. So I chose kind of a dusty purple, and now I can draw with that color. Um, now I'm going to look at some of these other brush tools. Um, the next one is a calligraphy pen, which I love the calligraphy pen. Um, so if you see, it kind of um, naturally gets thick and thin based on the way that you're moving. All right. Again, you can adjust the thickness of your basic pen to be thinner or thicker. Um, again, you also have opacity to play with. Okay, I'm going to go back to undo again, kind of clear some of this off. It's a little crazy right now. Um, okay, so what else do we have? We've got oil brush. Um, I don't use this one a whole lot, but um, it does have an interesting texture. Um, I did have a few students do some kind of interesting things with it um, because it has this, um, this kind of raked texture. Um, I had someone do kind of a beach scene that had that looked very sandy and like a real sand texture um, with this oil brush. <clears throat> um, let's see, you also have, so watercolor is another one of my favorites. Um, watercolor is a really nice blending tool. 
So it's this nice kind of delicate wash that bleeds. Um, you can adjust the thickness, especially if you do something really thick. You can get a very gradual kind of gradation. Um, again, you can adjust the opacity um, to get something even more gradual. So you can get a really nice fade. And the more you go on top of your work, the darker it gets. Um, so those, those three are kind of my favorites. Those are the ones I use the most, the marker, the calligraphy pen, and the watercolor. Um, but we do have some others here. Um, the pixel pen is, um, is pretty basic. It's just a solid line. It's a little pixelated. Um, I think it's best if you need some really fine details, but it's still, you know, it's a little pixelated, a little uh, jagged. The marker, I prefer the marker, even at a small, see how much smoother that is? So, <clears throat> um, your pencil and your crayon both um, are textured, um, similar to the oil paint, um, but with a different kind of texture. The crayon. All right. Um, your eraser is useful, certainly. Um, you can bring it back to white anywhere you choose. Um, spray can is kind of similar to um, the watercolor. Um, it's another way that you can make um, kind of a gradual gradation. Um, it has less texture. So if you see um, over here, this watercolor has kind of a dappled texture, um, whereas the spray can is a little more even. Um, <clears throat> and then last but not least, we've got the fill tool, um, which fills in solid shapes. Um, so that can get a little funky if with this variation, but you can adjust your tolerance. Um, so the tolerance means um, the amount of color variation um, that will fill to one color. Whoop, so that was too much, too much tolerance. I'll adjust that back down. Let's see if I can get it right. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I might go a little bit lower. Too low. There we go. So see how I, I kind of went back and forth to find the perfect amount of tolerance to get that shape. All right. So let me go, go back a little bit here, clean this up a little bit. It's messy. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna show you the shapes. So if you go back up here, um, your brushes are this first menu. Right next to it, you have 2D shapes. So with 2D shapes, you have lines and curves and this um, kind of panel of possible shapes. So I'm going to draw a shape. When I, when I put that shape in, um, you know, I can adjust the size. I can spin it. Um, I can also choose my line and fill. So this currently has a solid colored fill and no line. I can add, I can add an outline if I want. I can make that thin or thick. Um, and again, I can make it, I can adjust the opacity. Um, this stamp tool allows you to copy exactly the shape you just made. So you could make um, like a repeating pattern. Um, but in paint, you know, once you, once you put them, that's where they are. Uh, of course, you can always undo, but once once you deselect the shapes, they, they are where they are. Um, I'm going to do another one here. Okay. 
so those are my shapes. Um, I can click the check mark to get back here. Um, maybe do curvy line. And again, I can adjust the thickness. I can change the color. Um, for the shapes, um, it's, a, it's a little bit harder to find that color chooser, color selector. Um, this bottom row, if it's empty, you can just click on an empty box. But if it's all full like mine is, if you double click on it, that pulls up this, um, this color selector here. So... Um, there you have it. Um, so those are the features that we're going to be playing with today. Um, I will show you how to save it though. Um, so once you're, once you're done playing, I want you to save it. I want to see what you did. Um, so you're going to click on menu, save, and I, I recommend you make a folder for your art projects to keep all your art projects in one place in your computer. Um, I'm going to call this Abstract Shapes 2. I already did one. <clears throat> and so so the, the goal for today for this is mostly to play around with these different features, figure out how to use them, and see what it feels like to, to use them. Um, I, I would like you to make um, some, keep it abstract. Try not to um, try to make a picture of a thing. Right? We're just kind of playing with shapes and colors. We're not making anything that represents something real. Um, and if you were in class, um, I would like you to think back to um, the artworks that we looked at and talked about. Um, if you miss class, I'm going to upload that Nearpod so you can at least look at them. Um, but we were talking a lot. I, I showed some really cool abstract artwork that was all geometric and organic shapes. I want to play. I want you to play with those different kinds of shapes. Um, keep it abstract. Um, you could add some patterns. These um, the shape tool is really good for making patterns. Um, you know, if you make a small shape, you can you can clone it with the stamp button and turn it into a pattern. Um, so I want you to play around with different ways to use paint and create something interesting. All right, keep it abstract. And try to, you know, play around with the different options here. Um, there are a lot of cool things you can do in paint. So um, have fun. And I'll see you tomorrow.